for this our own minister james bless the name of the lord i have listened to our minister many many times here glory to god even before she be a member here and there's not one time hallelujah to god be the glory that i've listened to her and my soul is not richly ministered unto and i trust the lord for nothing less but the same this morning and so i take great pleasure in presenting to the congregation minister james in fear of the holy spirit minister james congregation god praise bless god. you hallelujah praise god praise god standing here at the rest see god's people begun to complain soon fear and his mighty army they're gonna take us in bondage again but stand still and see the salvation of the lord moses cried soon god he departed the water But you know, when you fill up a tank, whether you do half tank, quarter tank, or full tank, at some point it's going to run out. Amen. So you have to keep refueling. Amen. 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 And so this morning I am here for a refuel of my spirit Alleluia. so that I can carry on the good fight of Alleluia. faith. Alleluia. You know, when I was asked to do the word this morning, I first said no because I am going through. And the devil, last week, the, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we got. I was expecting that some attack was going to come to the angel with, with such blessing. You know, sometimes you go to some convention, some night, not so bad, and some bad, some all right. But I mean, for the whole four nights, you could feel the presence of God radiating through the place. There was not one night that I felt thirsty. I was full and running over. And I know the enemy was not pleased with that. And so the attacks came and I said, I just wanted to be by myself and fast and pray. But as I, as, I, as I listened back 
to the word that um, Pastor Cook preached. He said, woe to, woe to you. If you can't be preacher, you know preach. I can yeah. hear the word over and over in my spirit. I said, you know what? Make, make I take up that. Make I take up that man to you. Because God has given me a word. I woe to you. If you don't deliver the word. I, I don't know about you, you know. But I know that God has called me for this purpose. Amen. And I'm here to fulfill the calling on my life. So if you preach with me this morning, both of us today can chase 10,000 in Jesus' name. We're going to look in short today in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 6, I'm sorry. 2 Kings chapter 6, and I'm going to do 13 to 17. And it reads thus. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore send he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. Praise God. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Hallelujah. And Elisha prayed and said, said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may Yay. see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. This is God's holy word. So Elisha was a prophet of God, as we know. And he was an Israelite. And uh, as we know, every time Israel sinned, the enemy would come in on them. Hallelujah. But God made a promise many years ago to Abraham that he was going to bless his seed. So sometimes God will lose the enemy on them, but he's not going to lose them so much for them to be totally destroyed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Elisha was one of those people who every time he talked to God, God would reveal secrets to him. And God would reveal to him that the enemy of Syria was coming close, even before Hallelujah. they step out to come to um, Israel. And so every time the Syrian launch an attack, by the time they get there, Israel escape already. So the king got a little suspicious and said, come here, man. Called his army one day and he said, let me ask you, which one of, which one of you is against me? And they said, my Lord, we don't know what you're talking about. We're all with you. He said, no, man, one of you among us is spy. Because every time I go to the enemy, by the time I get there, they escape. Amen. Somebody Amen. taking the news. Amen. And in verse 12, if you look, he said, one of his servants said, no, no, my Lord, none of us, my Lord. But it is Elisha, the prophet, that is in Israel. He telleth the king of Israel the words that you speak it in your bedchamber. Mm. You know, in the early days, we used to call them discerners. And we say, discerner, well, sometimes God will just send a messenger. I don't know about you, but I grew up in, the, in you know, in St. Anne, and sometimes, out of the blue, we just say, evangelist, just come. Amen. We used to call them a seer or a messenger yeah. in those days. And why we start for the same time, because we know God sent a messenger to say something yes. to us, something yeah. right in the church. And out of the blue, a seer just come and start to talk the things. Well, so it was with Elisha. God will speak so much to Elisha that before the enemy launch an attack, he would say to the king of Israel, move from here or go there or go there because an attack is coming Hallelujah. long before it came. And so this was what was happening. So the king realized that there is a spy that he could not see physically. And that spy was not in his army, but God himself was telling his secret to a man. Come on now. And so he, they gathered their armies together and said, all right, we're going to get this man. Yes. Sometimes you're in a situation where you're just show up because God sent you an assignment. Whether it's in a job, whether it's in a church, school, a family, I don't know. 
but there's something different about you. Amen. And all of a sudden, somebody just don't like you because something different about Hallelujah. you. So Elijah was not liked because there was something different about him. He was the mouthpiece of God. Hallelujah. And so they decided that they're going to capture him. Because here he is talking the things, them as they would say in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Talking things that he shouldn't be talking. And so if we capture Elijah, mm -hmm. then we can go in on Israel. Yes. How powerful is one man? That the uh, whole army was coming for one man. Mm -hmm. This man don't have a gun, he don't have a knife, he don't have a sword. Yet an entire army was coming for him. Hallelujah. I want you to remember that you are like Elisha today. Hallelujah. When you are chosen by God, Hallelujah. that is why the enemy will come at you because the enemy is coming out, launching an attack, and it's not one alone coming to the angel. It's a whole host and an army. Mm -hmm. But what are you going to do when you look down and see the enemy? Do like what Elijah did. He held his peace. Yes. His servant was having an attack. The servant was looking through the eyes of flesh. And what was the, the, the servant seeing? When you look through the eyes of flesh, you see the problem more than you see the solution. Hallelujah. He was seeing the enemies surrounding them, marching. He start trembling, said, Lord, we are them now. What are we going to do? The enemy is around us. You see impossibilities when you see through the eyes of flesh. Come on, I'm talking to myself also this morning. Hey, hey. You see danger all around you Amen. when you see through the eyes of flesh. You see death and you start preparing for your funeral. Hallelujah. When you see through the eyes of flesh. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You believe everything the enemy said to you. I'm going to kill you. And you start fretting. Mm -hmm. When you see through the eyes of flesh, yes. you realize that the enemy is closer even before the enemy gets close to you. Yes. Oh, Praise God. God. Yes. You spend too much attention paying attention to the enemy. Amen. Too much time paying attention Amen. on the enemy. When you see through the eyes of flesh, you take up your phone, Sister Jody, and you start talking about the enemy. Mm. When you see through the eyes of flesh, you complain a lot. Mm. When you see through the eyes of flesh, you murmur a lot. Amen. And don't you know that murmur is one of the biggest sins in the Bible? Yes. Oh, you're not following me this morning. Hallelujah. Don't you know that murmuring is one of the biggest sins in the Bible? With murmuring, God said to Moses, Step out of the way, let me wipe out the whole of them. Mm -hmm. And make a brand new nation of you. That's how much God hates murmuring. murmuring. Yet all of us are guilty of it this morning. Hallelujah. All of us. All of us. Murmuring is, is a key that opens the door for the enemy to come in on you. When you start to murmur, you start to lose strength. The Bible said, The joy of the Lord is my strength. Anytime you start to murmur, the strength starts to wither away. You stop remembering who you are in God. You start get dim when you start to murmur. And so the enemy do pass that pass the angel. Because he knows that you're strong enough. And you love to pray now. Come with one attack you know. And boom, 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 boom. You might come two, three, four, five times, one time upon you. Because he knows that you know who you are. When you know who you are, the enemy continually attack you. So you can't allow yourself to murmur. I have found that murmur is one of the biggest, the yeah. biggest doors that you open to the enemy. You lose your way when you stop yeah. murmuring. When you stop murmuring, you stop murmuring, say God is who he said he is. And you start to focus on the enemy. When you start to look through the eyes of flesh, you become anxious. You become nervous. You become fearful. You start to abort your vision. The vision when you're right, only let you remember so you have plans for it. Because now the enemy has caused you to be looking on the enemy. When you start to look through the eyes of flesh, like Peter, you start to sing. You stop walking on water. Things that you used to do, you don't find yourself doing no more. Because now you're looking through the eyes of flesh. I wonder which eye we're looking through this morning. I wonder how we're seeing this morning. Did I tell you my topic? My topic is open our eyes to see like you see, Lord. Yes, Lord. When you start to see like God sees, the impossibilities become possible. Yes. Do you know why Elisha was chased by the enemy? Because he saw like God saw. Yes. You see, when the, man, when the young man was having a heart attack, in Jamaica, I want to tell you, 
What's happened to the young man? What, what's wrong with him? Because you know you have to be very careful who you hang out with. Yes. So what Elijah said, if me 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 brave, you have to be brave too. Yes. If me strong, you have to be strong too. Hallelujah. You know sometimes we have real wrong people who they want to be the superior among you all the time. Mm -hmm. But Sister John, if you are my friend, if me strong, you must strong too. Yes. If me can pray, you must can pray too. Yes. I am stepping and I'm pulling you because the Bible said a good friend honors their friend above themselves. Yes. Yes. I can't be your friend and the only thing you want to do is step up yes. and watch me yes. down the ladder. No, sir. If we are friends, you must want me to be which one yes. you get there too. Yes. So Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes. Make him see like how me can see that. Yes. Let him see the things that I can see. Because he's looking at the enemy and he might distract me. Come on now. He's distracting me with his thoughts. He's murmuring, he's distracting my spirit. So open up his spirit, Lord, to see like I see. When Elisha prayed for the man, the man was able to see. He saw the angels, chariots. Fire was surrounding the yes, mountain. Lord. Come on now. Yes, then he realized, okay, I am not alone. No. Those who are with us are more than those who are with yes. them. Yes. He realized something special was with them. Because the enemy had chariots. Mm -hmm. And they had an army with them also. But they didn't have fire surrounding them. They didn't have angels as their bodyguard. I remember the other day I was praying. I was praying Psalm 91. And as I was praying, the Holy Spirit revealed to me, he said, do you know that angels are your bodyguard? Amen. Can you pay for that service this morning? Oh. Angels are your bodyguard. Hallelujah. And here we are having a heart attack, worried about what the enemy is saying to us this morning. Oh my God, have mercy, Jesus. So the Bible said, Elisha prayed, and so Lord opened his eyes. Oh, and when his eyes was open, he saw fire surrounding the mountain. Hallelujah. I remember, um, an evangelist was talking some years ago, Otto Grant, and he said that what the, uh, he heard intelligent information from hell, he called it. Mm -hmm. So I uh, uh, man reported to a woman who came there. Hallelujah. And he said, every time I look in my crystal bar, I see this tall dark man. We're praying against me, and every time I release my powers to hit him, fire just consume it. Mm -hmm. The fire, I see, I see him walking with a tent of fire around him. And every time I unleash, unleash my, my attack, the fire consumes. Oh, Don't you know that you're walking with fire around you this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you know that angels encamp around about yeah, you this morning? Yeah. Don't you know that the presence of God is with you hallelujah. this morning? Praise them, praise them. Hallelujah. So the Jesus man of God hallelujah. prayed for the servant that was with him. And he saw the presence of God around him. His heart was now steady. Because Elisha was a man, one of the reasons why he was hunted so much, he was a man who could reveal secret. Hallelujah. The only way you can reveal the secret of God is when you spend time with God. Yeah. Sister Angel, you've been married to Pastor Angel, and if I come and ask you some things about Pastor Angel, you can tell me because you know your husband. Yes. You spend time with your husband. Yes. There are things, even though he's my pastor, I don't know about him, but you will know because you spend time with him. So if you if you want to know God, you must spend time with him. If you want the presence of God to rub off fire, you must spend time with him. Elijah was able to reveal secret because he knows the heart of God. Come on now. We can only get to that place through deep prayer and consecration. Deep commitment to God, man. That is launch out not a deep experience, deep things. But the Bible said deep call it on to deep. We can't stand up in the shallow and want to experience the things we're out there. So you have to step out in the deep to experience the things of the deep. So Elisha was haunted because he was a man who could tell secrets, even the things you do in your bedchamber. Why? Because God was protecting Israel. So every time there was a plan to launch, he said, hold on to Elisha, tell the king so and so and so. He was haunted because he was a man who knew military secrets. You know the secrets of your enemy. The enemy is supposed to know your secret. Come on now. The enemy is supposed to come too close. 
where they know your secret. But you should know their secret this morning. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you're dwelling in the secret place of God, He tells you things. He shows you things. You understand the mysteries of God. Somebody comes sit down in a church and you can't go and sit down and hold the seat beside them because you know there's something wrong right here. And the plan we are coming here with this morning and I'm going to unleash because God don't show me so you're coming long before you set out. But when you spend time with God, He reveals the mystery of the, of the mystery world to you. Things that you don't even know. How you should know this and why you know this but God revealed it to you. When you spend time with God, he was hunted because he was a man who could do the impossibilities. One of the things he did was he worked against the norm of nature when he allowed an axe head to swim. Yes. Remember when he prayed, the man said, alas, my Lord, it was borrowed. He said, no worry yourself, man. Take a piece of branch and the axe head start to float. When you're serving God in spirit and truth, he allow you to see the impossible. I wonder if there's anybody who still believe that God does miracles this morning. He still works miracles. He still does things that seems impossible with man. He was hunted because he was a man who cured leprosy. Remember Naaman? Naaman wanted to dip in the clear waters. But he said, no man, go down a dirty. Go down a dirty if you want to come up clean. Sometimes we don't want to get dirty up, we don't want to get messed up. But sometimes the Lord will put, let me tell you something, man. For God don't want to help in a bridging. No. All he wants is your praise. Hallelujah. And what I realized with God, I can tell you my testimony. What I realized with God, all oh, praise be unto him. Yes. He don't share his glory oh, with another. Yes. I remember when I was getting ready to migrate, I sold my vehicle and I had over 1.5 million. And my vehicle was sold in U.S. dollars. So I had the equivalent of that in US. And every year I see him, I say, I can't wait to reach foreign. When I reach foreign, I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy a car. And I won't spend too long in my mother's house. And I'm, I plan, I plan, I plan. And every year I wait, and the money just keep running out, Sister Angel. Every year the money keep running out, running out. And when I get to the airport, I get to the airport with five US dollars. Oh From over. 10,000 US to 5 US dollars. And by the time I bought a burger, because I was very early and I was hungry, Amen. and I crossed the border, I must have bought 125 we have left. Amen. That become a farm you hear me? Hallelujah. Because God said, I want your help to bring you where I want to bring you. Hallelujah. I don't need your help. So when God is going to build you, sometimes He'll strip you down. Amen. Sometimes He'll make your name go through the mud. Sometimes He'll allow you to go through rejection. Yes. Because for God to promote you, you have to first be rejected. If you're already getting rich, uh, promoted by the world, you already get your reward. Yes. But the Lord said, when the world reject your man, then I will lift you up. Come on now. Why are you complaining that somebody don't recognize you? If you are rejected in this world, man, you have your reward with God. Hallelujah. Elijah was hunted because he was a man who multiplied the widow's oil. He was a man who raised the Shunammite son from the dead. He turned bitter water to sweet water. He parted Jordan. Come on. Sometimes you have to get frustrated with, with, with the situation. I'm frustrated. He gets frustrated when he sees the first miracle, you know. And remember? He's a weird. The man of God gone on it. Make us get that something here. work. Jordan, open up. I want you to get Jordan. Jordan, split wide open. I want to go to Jordan this morning. We want to split wide open. You need to get frustrated to the point Hallelujah. where you speak to your situation and say, In the name of Jesus, Jordan, get out of my way. In the name of Jesus, Jordan, get out of my way. Too long we stand up and look on Jordan. And I wonder where Pastor Angel, if you can help me pray, man. I want Sister Jordan to help me sing through the Jordan. I want the Sister to help me pray through the Jordan. You need to take up the mantle and say, In the name of Jesus Christ, Jordan. I wonder who will come, come roll with Jordan food. The man never worked a miracle a day before in his life. But he was sat, sitting beside an anointed man. And he watched the man daily. 
I never envy the man of God, the man. He was a servant for the man. Anything the man said, we do it with humbly, with a good heart. Lord Jesus, I will never realize that our next level is our obedience. Our next level is our humility. Yes. Sometimes you're in a situation and you have to humble yourself. Uh, and you know say you're not appreciated, but you have to humble yourself. Yeah. Because Elijah humbled himself. Yeah. And you know what happened later on? He got double portion. Amen. He got a double portion. Uh, because Elijah did eight miracles. And Elisha did 16 miracles. Double portion. Amen. So don't grudge the man of, or the woman of God where God put you to serve. Yes. Because you don't know if you humble yourself, you can't get the double portion. But the humility will not take it to the next celebration. That was not in my message, but it just dropped in on my spirit. So I have to say it. Maro go shake hold of us. He humbled himself. Yes. And he parted Jordan. With the same mantle we drop down from oh, Elisha. No. Sometimes the same things that we are sitting and learn are the same things they are going to use later on. Yes. So let them be your, your testimonies. Hallelujah. Let them be your manure to take you to the next level. Come on now, brethren. Hallelujah. God will open your eyes to see light he see when you continue to seek after him Hallelujah. with your whole heart. Yes. In, the, in the book of Exodus 14, 14, the Bible said, when your eyes are open, Hallelujah. what the Bible said, when you hold your peace, mm -hmm. he will fight your battles. Hallelujah. When your eyes are open, you stop trying to fight the situation yes. by yourself. Yes. When your eyes are open, you realize that God is Hallelujah. on the job and he's going to fix it for you. Come on, brethren. Hallelujah. You will not fear because you know that the Lord is fighting against the enemy Hallelujah. for you. When you know God and your eyes are open, to the things of God, you will know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And the tongues that are risen up in judgment shall be condemned. Praise God. You will also remember that when the righteous cry, the Bible said he delivered them from all trouble. What we find ourselves doing is we give God so many trouble, I will take some to wisdom. But what the Bible said, he delivers them from all trouble, not just some. So every situation you have, as simple as it may be, he said, I will deliver you from it, but you have to trust me. Hallelujah. Trust me that I will deliver you from Hallelujah. all troubles. When your eyes are open to see the things of God, you will do like Romans 8, 31, and say, God is with me. Who can be against me? Hallelujah. If God is for us, tell me who can be against us. When your eyes are open, the Bible said that he will deliver you in all situation. There's a plan Hallelujah. to deliver you out of every situation even before it comes. That's what that means. Amen. I will deliver you from all trouble. That means that before it even happens, Sister Jody, there is a preparation to take you out long before Amen. it happens. Come on now. When you trust God with your whole heart, you will know that we are more than conquerors through him who love us. I was listening to a preaching the other day and he explained the scripture so profound that I never seen it from, it, from that point of view before. He said more than conqueror means a person who a person who fights, like for example, a boxer. A boxer is the conqueror. But when he took the what they take the prize and bring it home to his wife, his wife is more than conqueror. Because the wife didn't fight in the battle, but the wife get the prize. So the wife is more than conqueror. So you are the wife this morning who got the prize. Jesus already fight the battle. And he said, You are more than conqueror. You don't have to lift a finger. Anybody remember Joshua and Gideon? And Jehoshaphat, when they obey God, they never have to lift a finger in battle. Some of the biggest, um, uh, some of the biggest war that was fought was when Israel didn't lift a finger. Hallelujah. God didn't want no help. He said, "Blow the trumpet and sound an alarm of praise, and when you look, the enemy start to destroy the enemy." Come on now. When you obey God and trust God, He's going to fight the battle for you. Remember at the Red Sea. They never fight back. All they do is obey God and start walk forward. And Red Sea start to part. And when they look, enemies start go down. 
The Bible said the enemies were sinking like a heavy leg to the bottom of the sea. Do you have a battle this morning that you are battling with and fighting with and wondering why it can't come to pass? Maybe you're fighting too much. Maybe you are fighting the battle and God is saying, let me fight it for you. When a lifeguard is watching oh, at the, the sea and he sees somebody flapping, flapping like they want to drown. He not go at the same time because if you go out there, you're going to drown down too. You wait until you don't see no much life. You know, you're going to tell me run in and help you. Because he knows that you're trying to do too much. And that is why Jesus will wait until we're calm enough yes. to step in Hallelujah. and help us yes. in our situation. Hallelujah. Trust him today. The Bible said, through him we will push down our foes and we will tread on them and they will be under our feet. That's your inheritance this morning. That the enemy is automatically under your feet when you become a child of God. Some people talking about the enemy they pan their back and the enemy they pan their head. The enemy is under your feet. That's what the scripture said in the book of Psalm. Your inheritance is that the enemy is subdued under your feet. Praise God. The Bible said God will contend with those who contend against you. So if you have enemy, they are God's enemies too. If they're fighting against you, they're fighting against God. And it's a dreadful thing yes. to fall in the hand of God. Yes. You have a situation to the man, put it to God. Amen. Because he said, I will fight the battle. You will hold your peace. When you are open to the things of God, when your eyes are open to the things of God, you will start to say, what can man do unto me if I am a follower of God? Today, I'm encouraging your spirit to trust in God. To ask God to open your eyes to see like he see in the situation. I tell you something. Sometimes God tell me to do some, something. I say, God, I really you want to talk to me. Because I want to see like you see in the situation. I want to hear like you hear in this situation. I want to understand like you understand in this situation. Because God naturally, fear is automatic in me. But if my eyes are open to see like you see, I will step out like Peter on water. Some of us need to ask God to increase our faith this morning so that we can step out into the things that are of God. A lot of us are held back this morning from our purpose and our destiny because we open our eyes to see the things of the enemy. But why don't you pray like Elisha this morning and say, Lord, Open my eyes to see like you see. Because if I see like you see, I will see an end product rather than focusing on the problem before me. A lot of us run left for blessings. Run left in our enemy hand because of the torment that they're tormenting us. But if we just step into purpose and say, God, I leave this situation in your hand, the enemy will run and leave oh, us I just says sister like Elisha but you know what happened at the end of that story Elisha said God blind them with blindness strike them with blindness Hallelujah. and you know what happened God heard him mm. when you start to see like God see he will hear you yeah. I remember down in December I was praying about a situation in you know, <laughs> Jesus I said God I want so and so and so and so and I tell you, I was way up there the spirit past that angel. I feel God in the place. And I hear the Holy Spirit say to me, I am going to grant the desire of the heart. I may get afraid. I say, no God, I'm going to grant my desire. No, but that become miss it to myself. We can't trust myself. We trust you. I didn't know that the word of God said that he will give you the desire of your heart. So you know, I put it, if God say I'm going to grant the desire of your heart, that means he already put something in your heart to desire the right thing. But because I am thinking in the flesh, I said, but who am I if God grant my desire? Suppose me I desire the wrong thing. But the word of God said he will grant the desire of something. And he's God, he's a holy God. He's not going to fulfill something that's not in his will. So we have to mind how we pray not going there because when you pray certain prayer, you know, especially for the enemy, you have to go back and pray for them, you know. When you touch God the right way, you have to go back and pray for the enemy. Because God is going to hear you. When Elijah said, God blind them, without a shadow of a doubt, God blind them. 
Blind them. And then when you re carry them, go somewhere now, it's all right, God, open their eyes, make them see yes or no. Your eyes are open. I'm saying that to say this. When you are in right standing with God, you come on the hands of God. You pray and God hear you. So much that you have to go back for prayer and say, God, we never know, say the answer so quick, you know. Hallelujah. Never know, say the answer so quick. Because he hears you. You're in good standing with God. So we are asking God today to guard our eyes to see like he sees. So that our spirit will be in tune to know that God is here in this situation. What can man do to me? If you have a situation that you're struggling with today, I implore you to leave it at the master's feet. I implore you to trust God to take you through it. Because he said in his word, the battle is not yours, it is mine. So why won't you just give him back that situation this morning? And he will see you through. God bless you today. Hallelujah. I trust that your hearts were encouraged Hallelujah. and blessed. And that God will open your eyes.